Welcome to season one, two, three, four, five of Meet the Drapers, the world's largest international business plan competition. We're going global. We traveled the globe scouring the US, India, Taiwan, Portugal, Canada, and Brazil for their best and brightest entrepreneurs. This is amazing. Every week, these entrepreneurs will compete against their countrymen for a chance to make it to our international semifinals and then on to finals to compete for a $1 million investment from Tim Draper himself. The crystal ball ultimately chooses. But here's the twist. Your favorite business eliminated too early? Vote them back into the finale to get a second chance in front of judges Tim. This could be quite a thing. Holly. It's kind of exciting to people. And Bill Draper. That's a real plus in this case. As well as their VIP guest judges. Let the games begin. the beginning. Hey, welcome everybody. We're here for season five what? of Meet the Drapers. Can you believe it? We made it through five seasons. This is amazing. I'm uh, amazed that the audience made it through five seasons. <laughs> well, actually not all of them have. Welcome or welcome back to Meet the Drapers. This season, we're gonna bring you entrepreneurs from all over the world and we're gonna bring them right to you. Every episode, we have a winner and those winners all come to the semifinals. We judges choose three of those winners and you, the audience, choose the other three winners and the absolute winner of the whole thing gets a bunch of money and it'll be a million dollars maybe <laughs> <laughs> this is the season that really matters on my right is bill draper bill draper ran the export import bank was the head of the united nations development program started draper richards kaplan drk foundation dad <laughs> bill dad welcome to the show Welcome Thank back. You. And on my left is my sister, Polly. Polly is an extraordinary actress, director, producer, writer. In our quest to go around the world and see entrepreneurs everywhere, we had an opportunity to ride horses with the president of Chile. We were galloping. We looked out at this beautiful, beautiful lake and this beautiful mountain, and I fell off the horse broke seven ribs, punctured a, lung. punctured a lung, and this is my sister and she saved my life. So I wanna thank my sister publicly for saving my life. She Not was really, like the but air I... traffic controller. <laughs> she stayed with me for five days in the hospital. This is a good sister. I hope you are lucky enough to have a sister Aww. like this. And I feel so. that way about my brother and we had to, we had to save you in order to keep you being my brother. And keep the show going. <laughs> <laughs> because of Meet the Drapers, I felt it was my obligation. <laughs> and we have a new Draper. This is Ava Del Moor. And I hope I pronounced Almost, it. Uh, Ava Del Moor. But actually, Ava how, you, how you pronounce it, in Dutch, it, it means like Ava the Beautiful One. So okay, I can that's what I meant. That. That was the I whole point. I can also go with that. Okay, let's go with that. And Ava is the founding partner at Capital T and a scientist. Capital T is an early stage venture capital fund investing in tech companies in Europe. Ava, welcome to Meet the Drapers. And as you know, if you judge on Meet the Drapers, become a Draper. So welcome to the family. Wow, to thank have you. you here. Thank you. Very excited to be here. Ava, why don't we start with you? What are the trends in Europe? What's going on in the venture capital world in Europe? What kind of an effect has COVID had on your companies? What's going on out there? Yeah, no. So I think um, the first one, what we see a lot is uh, climate tech companies. I do think uh, with respect to the US, we're really a front runner there in terms of number of companies and the problems uh, that we are solving. So I think that's definitely a positive thing. 
with respect to COVID, so we invest in tech companies that are digital first. And a lot of the companies that we invested in actually accelerated with COVID. So if you think around a future of work, uh, education, technology, we see that these are really uh, verticals that actually because of COVID now find more and more traction and attention. We are doing good, but I think there's still a lot of work for us if you see um, how well US is doing in terms of like stakeholder management and ecosystem. So good things and also, uh, yeah, things that we have to keep working on. So there you've heard it, you've met our judges. We're very excited about what we're about to see today. Let's bring on the entrepreneurs. But before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. I love Mondays. I love my job. I love to share my time with all my employees. For me, this company is a challenge because we have a good responsibility to offer real physical sensation. With uh, a lot of passion, everything is possible. If you can imagine, you can do it. All right, let's listen to our first entrepreneur for season five. Jose Fuertes from Oh Wow! Since my childhood, I wanted to be part of the video game. At 47, I have made my dream come true. Turning your virtual world into reality. How? Adding a descent of touch. What is OVO? OVO is a patented haptic technology with an international innovation award from the CES. Why? because we just resolve a technological problem. Current the haptic technology in the market only can offer one sensation. So they are based on vibration. Ovo offer real physical sensation. We have our own algorithm, train of pulse, and the possibility to change nine different parameters of the electrical pulse in your body. The end user has 100% control about the intensity with the OVO app. So it doesn't matter if you have in the metaverse, in the video game, military training, in a video call, or in a smart city. You can feel hack, free fall, rain, wind, gun recoil. So your business model is to get other companies who make games, video games, to program your, your vest, right? Yes. We have two options. We have an SDK, Unity, Unreal, C++, C Sharp, Godot, and all developers can create any app to add the scene of touch. And the other way, we can read events in a real time. But why do you want to do that's, this? That's my question, too. Why? Yeah. Because in the last century, everyone is focusing on washing and heating. But what about the sense of touch? If the people want to create virtual world in the metaverse and you cannot feel anything, it's like you are talking with the avatars. But if someone touched you or you can feel, you can turn the virtual world into reality. If you can feel, your behavior while you are playing is totally different. In what way? Like if you got stabbed For or example, shot? If you are shooting in a room and someone is shooting you, the screen will be red, but doesn't matter. But if you feel in your body one bullet, your behavior will be totally different because this is real. Your mind say, oh my God, this is real. You need to change your strategy. It isn't uh, solenoids that hit, it's electrodes that shock. Is it's that right? electrical pulse in milliseconds. We have train of pulse. It means we have micro sensation and you can compose all train of pull. So, and what does it cost? The cost will be <laughs> under 400 euros, a 450 US dollar. Just asking for no good reason, but um, every sensation feels the same. It different. just feels, oh, it feels different. different. This is okay, the key so point. So what does the a key knife point. wound feel like? Yes. I'm, because I'm obsessed with the knife wound. The, in the market, haptic technology based on vibration only can send you one sensation, but our technology, we can manage in milliseconds its micro sensation. For example, this micro sensation, we have nine different parameters. Different, a duck, or a shot, or a hack. We can manage yeah, but the I muscle. What you're missing is sex. 
Yeah, okay. where's the sex? I'm not missing, but... You get to feel that yourself, You need pads. Yes, <laughs> you need pads. Yeah. There are an, an application in Oculus about sex, and you can feel like everyone is touching you, enjoy with you. Yes, we are exploring this this way. But are you considering creating also a pants? That you have like a full suit? Or how should I see this the, yes. like... The how do you do the sex part? Is yes, what you're really we asking, have. Right? We have pain. <laughs> But we prefer is like a, an anadema because if not, we need to increase the the price. Four hundred fifty dollars, and for that, I don't get any sex out of it. <laughs> Maybe we can do any. I think we got a highlight. How are you going to make money doing this, and how how are you going to build the following and? Okay. Who's gonna, who's right. gonna find you and Okay, right now there are 2.7 billion video gamers in the world. This is a good industry for retail. And 200 in the United States and 300 million in, in Europe. In virtual reality, in Oculus, we have more than 25 video game adapted. Also in console, in, in mobile. And in PC, the people can play LOL, CSGO, Valorant and Fortnite. You can feel free fall because we are using a platform Overwolf and they have 32 million users. So we are doing an agreement to offer our solution in PC. So it's a good beginning. Terrific. Well, thank you so much, thank Jose, you very much. for being on Meet this the Drapers. A, it's a pleasure. All right. Thank you very Welcome much. To the show. Thank you. So as a part of making Meet the Drapers even more fun, even more fun than it is, we have instituted a new game. It's called Draper X, and you can download it on the iPhone or on Google Play. You can participate. And so while you watch Meet the Drapers and you see these great entrepreneurs present, you can invest your funny money into those companies. And if your company goes and becomes a Semi-finalists, you get 5x on your money. If in the semi-finals, your company moves up to the finale, you get another 5x on your money. If your company ends up winning, you get another 10x on your money. Because so we're gonna have a leaderboard and the winners are gonna get big prizes from Meet the Drapers. I hope you'll download the game. It's called Draper X and you'll play it with us and be a part of Meet the Drapers. So, uh, what did we all think? Dad, what did you think? I don't like the name. Oh, whoa. Well, oh, wow, or uh, how, how do I pronounce it? Oh, oh, oh. It's like a dog barking. Oh, okay, like go on. Anyway, I don't like it. Uh, uh, I liked him, and I thought his presentation was excellent. He probably should have had a better demonstration. You want to try the pants, be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? So, uh, <laughs> Ava, what do you, what'd you think of this one? Yeah, I agree. I like the presentation. I like him. I think hey, it w it's a nice guy to work for. But the question I have is, how big can this be? And who is really buying this at such a high price? I, it's yeah. a good question. I I I, part of me says, yeah, would I really want to be stabbed and all that? But part of me says, look, what do you say? 2.7 billion gamers yeah. that are all going into this metaverse. Maybe something kind of interesting is happening there. And when you go into the metaverse, it is true. You don't feel, you just see and hear. So maybe this kind of becomes something over time. Polly, what do you think? Well, um to, to Eva's point, who are the gamers? How wealthy are the gamers? Or do the gamers live so firmly in, this, in their metaverse that $450 is nothing for them to spend on the vest that makes them feel? If we're gonna be sold on the company, we need to feel it. So honestly, it's hard for me to be sold on it because I, I, I'm not a gamer and I'm not a soldier in the war doing simulations. So I would have liked to have um, been convinced in the way that I could finally see what it was like. Kind of interesting. Yeah. We'll just have to see how the other three do. So let's bring on the next entrepreneur.
But before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. Maybe four or five years ago, virtual reality was known as just a gaming, a next generation gaming platform, whereas we're creating technologies for virtual reality for healthcare, virtual reality for education. Four years ago, investors would have said VR was dead back then. Now they're just so happy about VR. In two years, they'll probably say dead again. So a company in this kind of space, we have to just constantly be going through the tornadoes of different trends and different like opinions and try to survive through all of it, building and building and building and just surviving. And luckily for us, I think the, the silver lining of COVID is that it's really um, made a lot of stubborn organizations and regulatory bodies and governments much more friendly to technologies like virtual reality and what it offers. All right, let's hear from our next entrepreneur, Amir from Virtue Leap. Amir, go ahead, give us your pitch. Hi everyone, my name is Amir Bozorgzadeh. I am the co-founder and CEO of Virtualeap, a Boost VC Adam Draper backed company that combines the neurosciences with virtual reality in order to improve brain health. And specifically to address the huge impact well, that cognitive disorders. Well, we can all disorders. use a little of that. Right? Yeah, so how, how soon can you improve our <laughs> brain health? <laughs> well, you know, our main focus is to address agnostic to all cognitive disorders, but with a special focus on Alzheimer's disease, which is dwarfs every other cognitive illness by a, by a huge margin. It's cost of the world global economy about one trillion just last year. And so ultimately the plan for companies, the, the call to action among startups is can we introduce new technologies that can better profile the cognitive health of individuals and more importantly, can we introduce new tools that can detect the early onset of cognitive illnesses, not just years, but decades before they ever onset. The problem is that current cognitive assessment tools, they are screen-based, which means they're limited and lacking because they exclude the body. Virtual reality is the first embodied digital format that literally hijacks the human system from head to toe into believing that the experience is real. That means higher quality data, that means higher adherence levels, that means higher engagement levels. But you know, the, the, the superpower, I know you guys come across VR companies for the last decade, but the superpower of virtual reality is this volumetric data sets. When you talk about a company like ours that is doing cognitive assessments, then virtual reality is not just higher, better quality data. It means it is combining physical data with the psychological and they have integrated physiological sensors that have like heart rate variability pupil dilation. We have algorithms right now in real time calculating whether you're bored as hell or if you're focused or if you're stressed out. This is a whole new generation of data and ultimately what Virtual Leap has done is created a library of these VR games designed by our neuroscientists to test and train all the typical cognitive abilities like memory and information processing and, and problem solving but also motor control, spatial orientation. So is there a feedback loop? where like the, the, body, uh, adjust, the body sends off some signals and then the game adjusts to it? We do have those kind of feedback loops in adjusting, for example, if someone is in a wheelchair, the games will automatically adapt to it. If someone has uh, color blindness, the accessibility settings change that. The font sizes can change. That's where the feedback loop comes into maximum user comfort and accessibility. So we can address this to older adults or kids, the general population. but. By and large, what we're doing is we've already had 39,000 early registered users test stress test our games across four different languages, crazy demographic uh, differences. We have the now basically um, partners that have two clinical studies underway, um, one in the US, one in Spain, both focused on Alzheimer's disease. Is it just to test, oh boy, they really are doing badly? Or is it, this can help you be better? Well, monitoring, for cognitive health, we're doing right now. The clinical studies will need to show for the science to indicate by peer review studies whether we do have a therapeutic effect, but we're designed based on the bleeding edge of neuropsychology and Achille Interactive already proved that the FDA gave breakthrough designation for one game. We have 15 games of the same design. So, so I'm very So where confident. are you going with the business? Are yeah. you going down the data tra track or down the therapeutic, therapeutic track? track. Absolutely, therapeutics is the, the North Star because that's where the, the real big opportunity is. However, all three of us are extremely interested. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, 
you have these applications like therapeutics, but that's the, that's the North Star, and that's where we're going to go, and that's where we are going to go. However, the applications are so agnostic that we've created a system that can be used by private high schools, can be used by high, uh, children's hospitals, it can be used by anybody. And if you look at the number of partners we have, they're validating us across every use case from monitoring and data assessment side, uh, using volumetric data sets that you, know, you have so many examples of, but therapeutics is where we are headed towards and focused on. So can we demo this? I would love for you to stand up. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna load you up Let's with up. Enhance. Okay, so I'll just hit play. Yeah, play, play. I'll be, con I'm conducting a choir of moles. <laughs> I've already failed the test. It's a lot of pressure in this room. The best thing about these games is that everybody oh. is a caricature overdeveloped in some cognitive areas. Oh, I see, I'm, I'm areas doing this. At the expense of other cognitive areas. So oh, yeah. my wife always laughs at me because I'm lost in any of these European towns where I don't know where the heck right. the north is. Even after a week, and she goes, how can you be that, you know, right. daft? That's how I am too. But my memory scores in these games show high, but my spatial orientation are super low. Oh, oh, so it reflects the caricature of everyone, yeah. which is the educational side. Interesting. And so if, he, if, if someone hates a particular game, it's not because they hate the game, it's because it's touching on their Achilles heel mm. of an area right, in their sure. life they always sway away from. Yeah. And that's what you know, the culture is always about. It's glorifying the Tiger Woods, overdevelopment of one particular one thing, thing yep. at the expense of, of other things. So how do yeah. we become more wholesome? Yeah. How do we use this as a gym for the mind? Yeah, yeah. You know, so. Okay, I get it. it so I sort of get it. <laughs> Here, you can take these. Thank you, Tim. Follow me on Twitter. I'm at Tim Draper. If you got a great idea, go ahead and send it to me. And who knows, you might be the next big contestant. We'll be right back after this. Hey, so what did we all think? What did you think, judges? You're all judges out there in audience land. Uh, why don't we go to Ava first? Ava. I think the, chal the, the challenges that I foresee would be more around legislation and in terms of yeah, looking at the future and FDA approval, how does this scale maybe differently within Europe and the US? So I would be curious to see that, but I think there's definitely a huge market here. And uh, he seemed to have like the answers actually, I think to all of your questions. So I'm impressed. I think it wouldn't need FDA approval only in that it's not really invasive, it's a test. It's not. It's nothing like, oh, this will cure your Alzheimer's. It's more like, a test for it, which was disappointing to me that it's at this stage. It's fantastic to be able to test it early. I would love something that was like games that help people who have Alzheimer's improve in their Alzheimer's. I do think that's in the long term, long term plan from what I saw that, in that the- It sounds like that is his long term plan. It's just, I didn't see how the test- No, agree. The leap from the test goes to the studies that help you improve. He thinks that if you understand all the data that you can then start making the right tweaks. Yes, exactly. And I wonder if somebody beats him by just saying, Phew, we got the solution. We, yeah, exactly. And they we, it. It, it would be wonderful if they had this and could move it out to the public. You know, I think he, it's a start and I would encourage him to to try to get all the help he can get to get it moving and move it out. What keeps me going is that I know this technology will change the life of so many people. I know that at the end of the day, if we can create digital characters that are lifelike, that we can actually uh, tell them what we want them to do, Didymos technology can help everyone connect in a very human way, and that keeps me going. Looking forward to hearing from you, Veronica. Tell us your pitch. So thank you. So I'm going to tell you my story. I want to help people to reclaim their digital identity. So if we think today within the immersive virtual worlds and what everyone is calling now the metaverse, there is five billion consumers digital. But there's one thing that is lacking, which is a really cool, more human interface. So I'm Veronica, I'm the CEO and founder of Didimo, and that's what we come to solve. We create digital humans from just one selfie in one minute for less than $2.
So creating great avatars usually is extremely expensive, very time consuming, a very sequential process. Hollywood industry AAA games usually spend about $500,000 on just one avatar. So we wanted to streamline. So what we did is we created an AI-based platform that allows to take the selfie, upload it into the cloud, and automatically get back in one single step a full digital asset. It's completely three-dimensional. I have a demo to show you if okay, we have the great. time. Okay, yeah, show it to so, us. So we're platform agnostic, so we're meant, we're a B2B, so we're meant to work with developers uh, and companies that will integrate our technology. I have pretty much preloaded a bunch of selfies that we created. You can have the digital character that you can actually change into any illumination. So we do also computer vision and image processing. We normalize the whole uh, texture so then the digital actor, uh, uh, character can adapt. Can you turn him to a profile? Absolutely. We can do anything like profile. It will be like really close. We can put a uh, full <coughs> body. We can change it. This is all 3D and I'm just manipulating it myself. So, and then we can actually also animate it. So it's already fully rigged, maybe that one. <laughs> anyway, you can do it. Oh, and it's tied to what you yeah. do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. what fun. Yeah, so pretty much what we're trying to do is really uh, anyone that needs digital characters, they'll come to us. I mean, How do they usually do it? So usually it takes, requires like a lot of artists. This was all done by one selfie. Yeah, just one selfie. H how much revenue do you have now? So, so far we've generated last year $250,000. Uh, okay. we, we have $9 million of investment that we received so far that it was mostly spent on uh, tech development, re building the product and then um, uh, hiring the team. So we launched the platform only at the end of last year. So now we are starting our commercial growth. Who is so, on your team? So we have, we're 26 people. So we're very fortunate because now we managed to attract people coming from Industrial Light and Magic, EA, Frame Store. So like big companies are already, we're already managing to attract talent. And all the senior management team has more than 20. You're the CEO. Yeah, I'm the CEO. And yeah. how did you come up with this? How did this happen? I'm a professor at the university. So I had my research lab for many, many years and uh, also with 25 on and off PhD and master's students and we wanted to automate the character creation process which is what I'm showing here today. But the idea to create a company is the result of doing a beautiful project with kids for autism to help them improve their communication skills by mimicking and drawing facial expressions on digital characters. And what I learned in 2010 was that we can actually build a new way on how people will connect. And so I saw that I had something really powerful on my hands that not only needed to be used for the game and, and film industry, it could actually really change how people will connect in, in the future. So people call me crazy when I started in 2016 because why are you doing avatars? And then now after the pandemic, like, kind of like the vision starts coming to be a reality. Don't you see a challenge with all of these avatars that in the end everyone looks the same? We use a combination of AI, computer graphics and computer vision. That means that we really want to capture the morphology of the face of the person in order to avoid that everyone looks alike. In fact, you know... But then if you build the AI, you still have to put in the data, right? So you have to make sure that you don't only put in like oh, but perfect it, DNA, something like that? No, no, it's, it's using machine learning and deep learning uh, for capturing specific points of the, of the person, not really kind of like using a humongous database like deep learning, right? So yeah. we're, we're really just using the combination. That's why our tech is so unique because it's the combination of the three spaces that makes you the ability. So you cannot of... fool the tech in that no, sense. No, 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 you can't. So we still want to get better and better because our accuracy is still in the 90% accuracy. So in terms of the likeness of the person, so we still have work to do on that space. Terrific. Well, thank you so much for being here. No, for thank being you so the much for the, for the Great, questions and the you, opportunity. Veronica. And judges, what did you think of Didimo? Polly, why don't you go first? Well, I'd lo really love to see the avatar um, on one of us, hopefully him, just so I could feel what it would be like to have this, this really accurate avatar. I think she could have done a better job on the presentation and also to your point around, okay, how does it really work? But I do think there's for sure a market for this. Dad, what did you think? I think 
she's got something, but I couldn't quite put my finger on. She couldn't make it clear. Yeah, I, here's what I think. First of all, she's got a really interesting consumer product and she ought to recognize it. I'm sure her nine and 13 year old are just crazy about it. They're doing all sorts of things with it. I actually think this does become really important in that metaverse, in the virtual world. I think she needs a CEO, and if she gets a CEO, this could actually be something really great. Right. So uh, let's bring on the next entrepreneur. But before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. What keeps me going is actually the reaction I get from customers and different stakeholders at the customer, from management to the operators. They say, wow, they've never seen this before. It makes them, I need to go back to the drawing board to see how to use augmented reality. I never thought you could do it that way. This is what drives me and my team. Emmanuel, give us your pitch. Hi, my name is Manuel Oliveira. I am the CEO of Kit AR, and we're the first groundbreaking industrial augmented reality a solution that helps manufacturing companies accelerate the digital transformation of their shop floor, focusing on human workers. In essence, we solve the problem of the missing bolt. Now, this doesn't seem like much, but if you're on a plane and one is missing, the next thing you know is that your window might be falling 31,000 feet to the ground. To address these disasters, big and small, we decided to combine man and machine to address the cost of poor quality. Welcome to the future of manufacturing, where you have no more missing bolts and you increase sustainability. Now, the manufacturing value in the market is around 35 trillion US dollars. And it's unbelievable that manufacturing companies lose between five to 40% of their revenue dealing with the cost of poor quality. We have a solution. We have an enterprise software platform that combines augmented reality with artificial intelligence and process mining to enhance the worker to do things right the first time, every time. Now, we have four different components working together. The first is to create context-rich instruction sets. Then the second is to deliver these instructions at the point of need. Third is we do the automated verification of what the worker did was done right. And fourth, and final one, we provide insights on how to do better next time. We're currently working with big names in the aeronautics and automotive sector. Our business model is proven effective. We have secured our first recurring customer, big brand name in the automotive sector, and we're closing our seed round that will allow us to grow the team and go aggressively into the marketplace. And we plan to expand into the US market next year. And we welcome anybody that wants to join us in this journey of transforming the shop floor. Uh, do you have revenues? Yes, we do have revenues. What are your revenues? Revenues, last year it was 300,000. In revenues this year, uh, close to 500, 600. And the, w the main target that we're doing is when we're raising this seed fund is next year uh, hitting the 1 million ARR. So how big is your seed round? It's 2 million, 2 million. And what are the key focus areas where you're gonna invest the money in? This is enterprise software, so going into manufacturing. So there's things to work on the platform. It's the growth of the team and set up the sales team because right now it's myself and the CMO doing the sales. Do you have to tailor your application for each customer or is it just a generic thing and then they program it and they do it themselves? That is a very good question. So our vision is to get to a full SaaS model enterprise SaaS model, where it will be like that. What we need to do now in between is we're focusing it on what we call a process template. Within a, a certain uh, process, family of process of doing certain things, there's certain things that are common across the board and across different customers, and those are the ones that we've developed. Everybody wants quality control. Yes. Everybody. So they check their own product for quality control. What do you do differently? Uh, in manufacturing, you have quality gates which are certain points where you uh, automate it, you have cameras and so on. Sure. Basically, making it uh, in a simple way, we're uh, providing a quality gate on the head of the operator that evaluates the quality of their work while they're doing it. Terrific. Well, Manuel, thank you so thank much you, for being yes. a part of this. Thank you for inviting me. Being on you. Nathan Drafer's. Thank you.
We would uh, love to hear what all of you thought of Qatar, since we're the judges here on film. We might as well hear from us. Um, so, Dad, what did you think of I, Qatar? I like the entrepreneur, and I always weight that a very heavy, heavily in my judgment. I think he told his story well, and I think uh, he brought me along. I, uh, I have some questions about whether it's all going to work, but I'm, I'm willing to go to the next step. Ava, how about you? Yeah, no, I agree. I think this is a very empathic founder. I think he knows what he's talking about. I am really interested in the business. This is a, it's a big market at the same time that also imposes a challenge. For example, we didn't get to speak about go to market. So how do people find him? I'm a little concerned that, um, you know, maybe he's got one of the luxury automobile companies, but Tesla would never use this because they're just using robots. Let's now, talk about the various companies that we've just seen today. OWO, the haptic system for, for VR where you go around and, and you get hit and punched and, and stabbed, uh, but all without hurting yourself. Virtue Leap, the company that's gonna fix Alzheimer's, but they're starting with data and they're doing it in a very exciting VR way. Dedemo, who's allowing us to just take a quick selfie and then have an avatar, which might end up being a great consumer product. And Qatar, which is our company that is making the industrial system have better quality. Well, let's bring on the entrepreneurs and we'll see what the crystal ball has in store. So as a part of making Meet the Drapers even more fun, even more fun than it is, we have instituted a new game. It's called Draper X, and you can download it on the iPhone or on Google Play. You can participate. And so while you watch Meet the Drapers and you see these great entrepreneurs present, you can invest your funny money into those companies. And if your company goes and becomes a semi-finalist, you get 5X on your money. If in the semifinals, your company moves up to the finale, you get another 5X on your money. If your company ends up winning, you get another 10X on your money. So we're gonna have a leaderboard and the winners are gonna get big prizes from Meet the Drapers. I hope you'll download the game. It's called Draper X and you'll play it with us and be a part of Meet the Drapers. So here are the entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs, this was the best session we've seen so far. We are really excited by all four of you, but as you know, we can only choose one, and that one will move on to the semifinals. So we're very excited about what we saw here. I'll start with Qatar. Qatar, I thought you were, you know your business. You know what you're doing. You're going after, you've got real customers. You got a real business. It is very exciting, but you're selling into the toughest industry in the world, which is the industrial world. Next, we've got Dedemo, Veronica. Um, Veronica, I think you're going after something really exciting. And I think as a consumer product, this thing could just take off. Uh, the world wants to go virtual. They want to be able to take a quick selfie and then have the whole, you know, be three-dimensional and look whatever way they want to look. I think you're on to something. I think, though, that you are a professor. You have blown through $9 million and, and have not yet really built a customer base. And we are very concerned about that. We think that you need to hire a CEO. We think you need a partner, whether it's CEO, COO, or, or president, we need, you need to hire a partner. And eventually this thing could end up being really big and we think it's a consumer product. I th we think your nine and 13 year olds are correct. Virtually, this is really interesting. Alzheimer's a huge problem. I had a lot of trouble in the VR myself. Really like your energy. You are, you're clearly, a, you know, one of the 
the, the great boost cockroaches. We think that you are going to make something very successful. The concerns are that maybe this is too much science and not enough business, and you're getting so deep into the data that you'll never really solve the problem. That, those are our concerns. On the upside, hey, you're, you could solve Alzheimer's, or you could delay it, or you could do something great for mental health, and that is a very powerful thing. Ooh, whoa. We thought this was really interesting, although uh, some of us were wondering if people really are going to get into the haptic world. We thought you understood it well, you knew you were a gamer, you knew that you wanted to feel it. You all have this amazing potential, and we're trying to figure out which way to go, so we got to go to the crystal ball. Whoa! The crystal ball is having real struggles here. This could go any number of ways. And beware that we are only choosing one of you, but the crystal ball is very fuzzy right now. But, but it's also sending vibes that are saying, you know, it may be that we'll want to pull up two of you at one point, but, but uh, the crystal ball is saying, oh no, oh no, it's Owo. Owo, Owo moves forward. Congratulations, and we wish you the best, and it's very possible that the other three of, any of the other three of you could also move forward, but oh, oh you are definitely moving on to the semifinal. Congratulations, you're, on, you're still on Meet the Drapers. Thank you very much. And thank you all, thank all three of you. You really did an outstanding job, and I think there's a lot of potential here. Thank you for all being a part of Beat the Drapers! <laughs> <laughs>